selamat sejahtera. How are you feeling this morning? Great? Fresh? Okay, I hope you have enjoyed your weekend. And I hope you have gone through some of the stuff that I put on at Modo. Now, um, we have gone through at length in the previous lecture. I have explained the, the, the differences between non-Newtonian time dependent and non-Newtonian time independent. Do we have any questions so far? Maybe I can uh, try to clarify or explain more if you don't uh, understand. So, time shear thinning behavior when we subject a sample to shear rate or shear stress, then the corresponding shear rate, and we increase the shear rate, the viscosity would decrease as a function of shear rate. But for time independent, shear thinning time independent, time is not a factor, meaning that the viscosity would not be affected by time. So that shear thinning time independent or also known as pseudo plastic. Then we have shear thinning time dependent. So in this case, the viscosity is a function of both shear, shear rate, and time. And therefore we call it shear thinning time dependent or we give a specific name for this exotropic. How do we differentiate thixotropic and pseudoplastic by uh, experiment? So we can use an instrument. The easiest is to use an instrument. We put a sample on in the viscometer or maybe easier to use a rheometer. Yeah? Then we can uh, apply a shear stress. Then we will measure the corresponding shear rate, as we increase the shear stress, will increase the shear rate. Then, um, so we can, we, can, we can do two set of experiments. First, okay, now we put a sample in a beaker or in any container, then we apply a shear stress. We start from zero, we increase the shear rate to some value. Okay? Then we measure the shear rate. So, we record the value and we plot the graph. So we get this curve. So this is called up curve because we increase the shear stress. Then we can stop at this point at, at uh, let's say, at any shear stress that we can set. Then after that, we decrease the shear stress, then we measure also the corresponding shear rate. We get another curve. And this time, because we decrease the shear stress, we call it down curve. So this time we call it down curve. So there are two set of experiment. We increase the shear rate, so we increase the shear stress, measure the shear rate, we plot the graph. Then we decrease the shear stress, we measure the corresponding shear rate, we plot another curve. So we have two curves here, up curve and down curve. And in this case, we can see the down curve um, is, sep is, uh, is a separate curve. It doesn't overlap. It doesn't overlap. So if we have this uh, situation, we can measure the area between these two curves. And this, is known, this area is known as hysteresis loop. Okay? That area can be measured very accurately by using a software on the computer. We, we don't have to use a manual technique. We just, uh, I mean, the program will calculate for us what's the area between these two curves. And that is called hysteresis loop. But 
there is a, a situation when the up curve and the down curve do overlap. They overlap. So the up curve will overlap maybe with the down curve and you don't see any area between the two curves. It, lo it looks like one curve because the up curve and down curve overlap. So in this case, the hysteresis loop is almost zero. zero. So the hysteresis loop or the area between the up curve and the down curve can be anywhere between zero to some value. So what is the importance of this experiment? This experiment actually provides an easy way for us to differentiate, to distinguish between shear thinning time independent or siloplastic and shear thinning time dependent or thixotropic. When, when the up curve and the down curve does not overlap, when there is an hysteresis loop, then we can say this sample or this, this material or this product has a thixotropic property. It is a thixotropic material. In other words, it can show shear thinning behavior and also time dependent behavior. When the up curve and the down curve overlap, then we can say the material exhibits shear thinning time independent or pseudo plastic. So I've shown earlier if we take any point on the curve, whether it's up curve or down curve, and we carry out another experiment. In this case, we fix the shear rate at x1, and we um, shear the sample as a function of time. And if we get a curve like this, meaning that now the viscosity is a function of time. It's not constant. So that means the, sam the, the, the sample displays or exhibits shear thinning time dependent. All right? So now, um, another, um, before we look at the significance of this time dependent, time independent, eh, I have put up a question uh, last night or yesterday in Edmodo, and I hope you have explored, you have read, tried, you have read on your own. The, 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 the how to differentiate between these two samples, which I have just explained to you. Okay? You're supposed to explain, but uh, maybe later. Um, but another parameter which is also important, and when you read any book or any article, any reference on rheology, is this term called yield, yield stress. Yeah? Yield stress. This is my son, so I use him as a model when he was in the primary school. He's now in Form 2 now, my youngest. So the same experiment that we uh, remember Aziza. Where is Aziza? Ah. Uh, Aziza um, demonstrated the other day. Yeah. So in this case, when he tried to pour the sample on the plate, the sample doesn't flow readily. So meaning that he has to apply some minimum stress or force. And that is the yield stress, which we have mentioned and also defined earlier. Yield stress is the minimum force, or better we say minimum stress required that we have to apply to initiate flow of the sample. Okay. So now let's look at combination of this rheological property. We have seen this picture just now. And let's see how do we interpret the significance, the importance 
of these properties? What are the implications in food processing? In how the sample would appear? How the sample would flow? How it would behave after the sample flows? How it would flow after we, uh, in, in, say, in the tank? How it would flow when we pump the sample through a pipeline? And from the pipeline into a dispenser? How it would flow through the dispenser? How it would flow into the mall? How it will take the shape of the mall? These are what I mean by the significance or the importance or the implication of the flow behavior. And this is where the difference, the differences between sample in terms of whether it's a seroplastic, whether it's tisotropic, whether it has yield stress, is important. Okay? So here, in this case, the sample the flow curve doesn't start at zero. So that clearly shows the sample has yield stress. Okay? Then that's why he has to apply some minimum stress or force. Then the sample will start to flow. How we would, how we would like to see the sample flows from the bottle? We would like the sample to flow smoothly. Right? not just flow, stop, flow, stop. In this case, once it starts to flow, you want it to flow smoothly. In order for the sample to flow smoothly, the viscosity has to be reduced to some value, usually a lower value, become less viscous, or become thinner. Become thinner, that's why we call it shear thinning. So when it becomes thinner, it starts actually at some uh, high viscosity here, then you, the, the viscosity would decrease as a function of shear rate now, then it will uh, flow easy, easier or easily. Okay? So this is what we want to see, the sample flow nicely, smoothly. Then on the plate, on the flow onto the plate, or on any surface or any, uh, let, let's say, uh, your burger, you know, you put your sauce or any, any kind of, uh, uh, you know, product that when, where you want the sauce to, to be, to be used. So, it, it appearance on the plate would depends now, what is the final viscosity here? The initial viscosity, the final viscosity. So now, once we pour the sample on the plate, it will, the viscosity at this point on the plate is here. So now, we can see um, the sample would now, at this point, we remove the stress. At this point, we remove the stress, and now, the stress acting on the sample is only what? Gravity. It's only gravity on the plate. There's no more shaking no more, you know? So on the plate, the, the, the only form of stress there is the force acting on, this, on the sample is the gravity. And how, how it will spread now? Imagine that if this sample, this, we can see that this sample has, a, let's, let's assume the amount of sample is the same. Then we can see we can say the sample on the left spread less than on the right. So we can, we can conclude a few things here. Or, yeah, we can, con we can say maybe sample, the sample on the left has lower viscosity than, uh, has higher viscosity compared to sample on the right. And therefore, it doesn't flow uh, or spread easily because it is more viscous compared to this one. Yeah? Assuming the amount of sample is the same here. Or we can also say that in terms of in terms of 
exotropy property here. Okay? In terms of exotropy. For a zero plastic time independent, shear thinning time independent property, the moment the sample flow and on the plate, it will recover the, the initial viscosity here. From here, it will recover the initial viscosity almost immediately. Almost immediately. It will go back from the, vis the lower viscosity here back to the original viscosity almost immediately. Because it's time independent. That's the meaning of time independent. So if you can recover the initial viscosity very quickly, then of course at this point the viscosity is higher than this sample, then it won't be able to spread um, to spread more compared to this one. So if we draw a curve, up curve and down curve for this sample, these two lines would almost overlap because the sample displays shear thinning time independent. Very fast recovery of the original viscosity. Remember, when the sample flows, the structure of the sample will be broken down. It will break and disrupt the structure in the sample so that it the viscosity would reduce and flow smoothly. Then at this point, the difference between this sample and that sample is the rate of recovery of the structure. How fast the sample would recover the structure. Imagine like a rubber band, elastic rubber band. You stretch, then you release. Immediately you will recoil it will recover the original shape because it's very elastic, right? Maybe you, you find another type of rubber band which is not that elastic. Or have you experienced you stretch something, like a chewing gum or something, then you release, hey, it will recover. Or it will recover, but slowly. Uh, that's the, what we, if you want to imagine the rate of structure discover, uh, uh, recovery, how fast it will recover the structure. That is the difference between time dependent and time independent. Time independent means it can recover the structure just like elastic rubber band. So from this point, it will, reco it will recover the viscosity almost immediately. So, in this case, when we measure the up curve and the down curve, it will overlap or almost overlap. Or, if there is any hysteresis loop, it will be very, very small. But the sample on the right hand side exhibit a exotropy property, meaning that the up curve and down curve will not overlap. We can measure hysteresis loop. And in terms of the structural recovery, it won't recover the structure uh, easily or readily. So meaning that it will recover the viscosity, it will go back or recover to the original viscosity, it will take time. It will take time. And therefore, we call it time dependent. So because it will take time to, to recover the original viscosity, it will have time to spread. Okay. The yield stress, How it, um, why is it important to understand about yield stress? Yeah? Yield stress is important for food processing, for example, you know, how it flows from the dispenser into the mold. I have explained this earlier. You know, and if you see in the factory, this process actually takes place very fast. The mold move, 
Okay? It's very fast. You don't have time to blink. You know, just <laughs> produce tons of chocolate every day. So you want the process to be very efficient. So you want the chocolate to flow, stop momentarily, so that uh, a new mold will come in. Stop momentarily, so that they, they, it will become very messy. And the formulation has to be adjusted so that we have built in some yield stress into the sample. So you, you, we pump that you apply this, the yield stress and it will flow. And you want the same, when, when the sample flow, this is a shear thinning effect. You want the chocolate milk to flow smoothly. So the viscosity will be reduced. But then it will stop momentarily to allow new mold to come in. But you don't want the chocolate milk to drip when it is while the mold, new mold comes in. So it will become messy. So you want it to dispense and stop. Dispense and stop. So for that, after, after the sample flows into the mold, you want the liquid, the chocolate milk, to recover the viscosity almost immediately. Just like rubber band, stretch, release, so that it will, it will stay here, not dripping. So what kind of property, just now that we discussed, we want need to have? Time dependent or time independent? Time? Huh? Independent. Time independent. Time independent. OK, good. <laughs> what about this? And now, when, when the chocolate melt flow into the mall, this is the mall. Okay, we let the, the thing to flow. It will take time to fill up the mold, right? Whatever shape the mold is. If the same uh, in the mold, if the sample, if the li chocolate li uh, milk recover the viscosity immediately, it will just blob and recover the viscosity. No chance, no time to flow to fill up the mold. We must allow some time for the liquid to flow and fill up the mold. So in this case, we want time dependent or time independent? Huh? Independent. Louder? Independent. Dependent. Muktamad? Yeah. So there is time we want the recovery of the structure to be immediate. And that is time we want the recovery of the structure to be not so immediate. Yeah? Uh, in, in making chocolate, uh, making chocolate cake, you coat with a chocolate liquid, right? In this case, we want to have what? Time dependent or time independent? Let's say you pour the chocolate on the cake. Then you just try to spread it. Then finally, you want the chocolate to form a smooth, flat layer. You, you don't want to see any kind of like, a, you know, mark or that not, you know, that flat, lah, that smooth. Right? You want it to have to have smooth. So in this case, after you pour the chocolate on the cake, you want the chocolate liquid to have dependent or time dependent time dependent or time independent. Uh, 
You want the viscosity to be recovered fast or slow? Uh, if it's slow, then you time dependent. Fast, immediate, time independent. Uh, that's how you want to. What about what about this picture? Uh, this uh, famous uh, Hershey chocolate. Right? There's a special property here. We use a term. Stand up property. <laughs> Meaning that you, you dispense the liquid chocolate. And now, after dispensing, uh, the, the, the sample is still soft and it is subject to gravity now. The stress acting now is gravity. You want the shape to be maintained. So you want the viscosity now, <coughs> slow recovery or fast recovery? Huh? Fast recovery. <laughs> because otherwise it will start to... And you don't get that shape lah. So, fast recovery, time independent. Zero plastic time independent, zero plastic, uh, sorry, shear thinning time independent, so it's a zero plastic property here. So, these are the significance uh, of, of this, and uh, this is another thing. So, Perhaps I won't say more about flow behavior because I think I've given some example and illustrate uh, the significance of this. And um, because we can plot the curve, uh, shear stress against shear rate, and the curve have different shape. And therefore, to make um, in, in, in food processing in the industry, the engineers the chemical engineers would like or prefer to work or to translate this curve into a mathematical equation so that they can do all the process design everything yeah and do the prediction and do the simulation so we can now describe each line or each curve on the graph by using a simple relationship it can be linear because uh, for Newtonian, of course, it's a linear uh, equation. But for the curve nonlinear relationship, then we have to use a nonlinear uh, relationship or regression to to uh, describe the relationship between the shear stress and the shear rate. Okay, so this is what we call model. Okay, we call it model. So I won't go through each one of these, please read on your own, but basically they are different mathematical equations describing the relationship between shear stress and shear rate. And if a sample has a yield stress, then the yield stress term will also be included in the sample, sorry, in the equation. Then once we have an equation, we can do we can plug in a value. For example, you can uh, now you can uh, use equation. Okay, at this shear stress, what would be the viscosity? At this shear rate, what would be the viscosity? And when we have time, sorry, temperature as another factor because we know temperature is also um, uh, affecting the viscosity. So we can also include the temperature also in the equation. So there are actually many engineering equation describing the relationship between shear stress, shear rate, and temperature. So now we can use this equation to do a prediction. So the engineer use this for process design, equipment design. Okay. So they can say, okay, at this temperature, if I pump at this shear rate, what would be the viscosity? 
So things like this. So please uh, read on your own. Uh, I think that in the online lecture also I have explained this. And uh, at least you are familiar with some of the model. There are many. There are many, plenty. But at least some of this. So I have explained this just now. A and B. So for sample A now, I think probably I hope you can you can tell now which one is more time dependent or time independent and how it relates to the flow behavior. And you'll find uh, different uh, application here. Uh, when you look at the graph, always look at the axis. Sometimes we plot shear stress against shear rate. Sometimes we plot viscosity on the y-axis against shear rate. Or sometimes we plot viscosity against shear stress. Doesn't matter. I prefer to look at viscosity on the y-axis against shear rate on the x-axis because I can see easily whether the sample dis uh, display, the samples display shear thinning or, uh, or not. Yeah? And when, when we look at the graph, the graph is a picture. A picture tells a thousand story. So can you tell a thousand story from this graph? Maybe not thousand, maybe one or two, yeah? But always look at what is the viscosity initially at zero shear rate. Zero shear rates mean the viscosity at rest. Viscosity at rest means I have a sample in the bottle here. That is viscosity at rest. Then the moment you start to, you know, flow, uh, let's, the moment sample start to flow, or the fluid start to flow, so it does, it's no more at rest. It's flowing. When the sample flows, of course we can measure the shear rate. It will, so, you can see. So what is the sample? Uh, what's the viscosity at at the higher shear rate here? At the higher shear rate, actually they have more or less the same viscosity. They reach. The, more, uh, the value where the viscosities are actually the same. But look at the slope. Which one has a higher or steeper slope? Sample A. Sample A has a higher viscosity than sample B. But when the samples, when both samples start to flow, look at the steepness of the graph. Which one is steeper, you think? Maybe uh, at within this range of shear rate, which one is steeper? A or B? A, yeah. Looks like A, right? So although A has a higher viscosity than sample B, but when it start to flow, so in this is a case of shear thinning. When sample A starts to flow, it flows more steadily, more readily, more smoothly than sample B. So these are the things that how you read the graph and interpret the graph to explain the flow behavior. Ooh, time. Now, I would like to end this lecture today with some fun. And all this um, already available on Edmodo. Now, let's... Who want to vol volunteer to come forward here? Okay, I, I need a few volunteers. All of you will be involved. Okay, these are some of the application. I just uh, upload the link 
just now before we start the lecture. Ah, let's try this. Let's have fun with word game. Let's test your knowledge on some facts and terminologies on the topic of food rheology. The word game really is really fun. Try it. Okay, let's try it. This is like Wheel of Fortune. Are you familiar with Wheel of Fortune game? You get a hint, then you, uh, no, yeah, you have to turn the wheel, then you get a hint, then you have to fill up, fill in the blank, the word, okay? Okay, now, would like to try the first question? Okay, your objective is to, re to reveal the hidden answer before running out of time. So every question has one, you have one, 60 seconds, one minute. To select a letter, click on it. If it matches, the letter will be revealed. Reveal all letters in the hidden answer before time runs out. We have 15 questions here, so can we do it? Ah, okay. Okay, please. Just try, no problem, no harm. Anyone? Please come forward. Okay, what is the question? One of the factors affecting viscosity. Okay, Christopher, come. So maybe you want to help Christopher, what is the answer for this one? And you just press with the mouse. Yeah, time is running out, you see? We have 20 seconds more. <laughs> Pressure, I don't know. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, let me call Ah uh, Te Chin In. Tada. Okay. Li Yen? Li Yen. Li Yen. Who is Li Yen? Come on. Faster, faster. We don't have much time. We have oh, so the score is six. How 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 many how much uh, the score would depend on how fast you answer. Okay. So you will be captured in the camera. So smile. So Lian, sorry, Lian, eh? Yeah. Lian. Okay, Lian, uh, click next. Click here to continue. Yeah, okay. Okay, what's the question? Sh uh, shear thinning time dependent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next, Nurul Hafiza. Okay, Nurul Hafiza. Faster, faster. Maybe we, we don't have time to do all the fifteen questions. The rest you can uh, do on your own. Okay. So what's the next what's the next question? Let's see. Click next, yeah? Click here to continue. Okay. A fatty food showing shear thinning, time dependent flow behavior. A fatty food containing fat. <laughs> okay, what's that? <laughs> there are a few more. Um, 
Yeah, 3 or 15, yeah? So the score, the score would depend on how fast you answer the question. So we will see the different person will get different, um, different uh, what marks, yeah? And if you check in Modo, I have, that's another game, the, puz the puzzle. So give it a try. And a few videos to show you the application of what we discussed this morning. So I hope uh, when you watch, after you watch the video, please give your summary. Yeah, please give your summary on Enbodo so that everyone can share. Okay. Okay, thank you. Stop here. See you on shoot tomorrow. Eh?